Good afternoon, mates. It is Friday, November 13th, 2020. Friday the 13th. Ooh. I'm out visiting the Mad River Gorge Nature Preserve near Springfield, Ohio. It's actually not too far from Wittenberg University. Mad River is one of the most common rivers in this area, which will eventually feed into the uh, Great Miami River in due time. But surprisingly, this river actually runs all the way up to the town of Bella Fountain, which is about uh, 30 to 40 miles to the north. But here you have an excellent example of an alluvial stream, which in other words means the stream carries sediments in the form of clay, silt, or even sand. And what's fascinating is there's a term that I want to mention that especially hydrologists use is something known as sediment yield. You may be thinking, what exactly does that mean? Sediment yield basically refers to the amount of sediments that passes through a particular area of a river in a particular uh, amount of time. In this case, it's usually a year. And the metric unit that's used is usually tons in the form of T-O-N-N-E-S, tons. So, yeah, sediment yield is, in other words, how much sediment passes through a particular area in a certain amount of time. And, yes, you may be correct. Sediment yield can vary in different areas. It may depend on what section of the river you are. So like in this instance, we're kind of at the run right now, which is essentially where the water just flows past. There's no riffles. It's, the water is a bit deeper. And usually the discharge, which is basically the speed of the water, is typically a little higher. So you have to always consider the location of a river when you're calculating sediment yield. And then usually alluvial streams also have something called the sediment load. And that res th that's a little more general. So that talks about, well, it's defined by how much sediment is carried in a particular region of a river. So, yeah, and sediment load also includes sediment that is transporting along the bed, also known as bed load, or it can also include the suspended load. So those are like more of the finer particles that remain uh, above the bed, so to speak. So you would expect, uh, for example, little clay particles to be suspended. Because clay, usually, it has a wider surface area with the clay particle. And so it usually takes longer for the clay to settle. So that is one of the attributes that make up an alluvial stream. So you figure a lot of these cut banks, they're eventually going to erode even more over time because that's what rivers do. They meander and they act like snakes because they're slowly trying to make their way 
towards larger bodies of water. However, though, sometimes having wider areas of rivers and not having like a very active flow isn't always necessarily a good thing. And that is the case because that would allow more algae to accumulate. And it wouldn't allow other uh, communities of fishes to thrive. So, you don't always want algae to accumulate too much. Because it'll literally take up everything. And that kind of turns into an algal bloom, which I may have to discuss in a separate video. Streams are quite amazing. You know, just the way how they behave. To be honest, it's one of my favorite topics to learn about. And just to wrap up, here you also have a chance to see the gorge itself. Uh, these are uh, Dolomite cliffs, kind of similar to that of uh, preserves such as John Bryan State Park or even the Clifton Gorge State Park. So, still a lot of history here. Alrighty. Thought I would share that with you guys. Hope you learned something about streams. May share an article regarding further about stream behavior and how we can promote healthy streams and why they're a good thing. So, all right. Hope all of you enjoy your Friday and Journey on a Journey is out. Take care and forgive the length of this video. I had a lot to discuss. All right, see ya.